Am I the asshole for refusing to help my brother after his wife blabbed about my financial situation? A few years ago I won a lottery and became set for many lives over. Even though my name and winnings were public records, I worked hard to keep it a secret. For the most part it worked. After verifying my winnings and setting up a trust, I told my family. My plan was to basically help each of my three brothers and my parents depending on their needs. My brother Chris and his wife Alice had three kids and I offered to pay for a down payment on a house they wanted. As crazy as it sounds, I was more broke the first year of winning than the year before I won because I was helping my family out. I had one rule for anyone who took money from me don't tell anyone about my money. Well, Chris and Alice did for clout and that unleashed a lot of people bombarding me with money requests. These were friends of theirs, friends of friends of theirs, in-laws, etc. Like my brother's brother-in-law asked me to pay for a wedding in St. Lucia because his fiancée wanted one and I met the guy twice in nine years. Though this happened in 2021, people still bother me constantly for money. I was pissed and cut my brother off. This led to a rift in the family and I largely became estranged from them. It was unfortunate because I was very close to my nephews and wanted to spoil them. Last week my other brother emailed me and said Chris has been sick all year and is bedridden and gets specialized care. Something to do with breathing. I said that was sad. He said that Chris and Alice were going to lose the house because Chris hasn't been working. They have four kids from age 4 to 15. I told him if he had something to say, then say it. He asked me if I'd help them out by paying their outstanding bills and until they can get back on their feet. I said no. The money isn't the issue. It's my privacy. I have no idea if they will keep their mouths shut about my helping them. I get painted as a nice rich guy. And then I have 10 people bothering me with their problems. You help them once, they'll keep on coming back. It's very funny how people just happen to have financial emergencies when you're helping others out. The other problem is that if my brother does pass, then I don't want Alice getting a house that I paid 20% of. She and I don't get along and she's the one who put my business out there. She was so certain that I'd take care of them that she didn't even bother to say, thanks for the down payment on our dream house. How bad is their financial situation? Bad. I'd offer to help in other ways but beggars want to be choosers and negotiate their charity. Edit. I'm not setting up some sort of loan settlement with my brother and his wife. They don't have the means to pay me back and would see it as a sign of weakness. Ironically the only other person who is against giving them money is my financial advisor. Sorry, I gave them $420,000 to buy a house and they managed to fuck that up. They live in a nicer house than I do. I don't live fancy. I don't own a Rolex and my clothes have holes in them. I bought my furniture from big lots. My other reason for not helping is that I know for a fact that his wife wouldn't help me if the roles were reversed and would be less nice about it. I love my nephews but I won't be blackmailed over them. When they come of age and reach out to me then I'll be there for them. Not the asshole the hospital has to set up payment plans for him. Let them sell their house and downsize to pay bills. If your brother passes you can help him out by helping his kids with college dollar. Not the asshole. You did a very big thing to help them, on one condition. The wife broke that condition. Now they need help and if I'm understanding everything correctly, one of the reasons they need help is because same wife refuses to work? Yeah, I wouldn't help either. If you're concerned about your nieces and nephews, set them up a college fund or something. That only they have access to. Not the asshole. You were very generous to Chris and Alice with just one simple condition that would cost them nothing to uphold and they didn't meet it. Never bite the hand that feeds you. Now, having previously betrayed your trust, they expect you to bail them out instead of Alice getting a job. No. Just no. They have options for meeting their responsibilities that don't involve using you, but they won't take them. As Alice is refusing to solve their problems by getting a job, it really is her you'd be helping most by bailing them out. In fact, if they lose the house because she refuses to work, you would have every right to be furious about them squandering the generosity you showed them. Info. Had you not won the lottery would you willing to help your brother who seems very sick and in a rough patch? Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. The council has decided. Not the asshole. It's your money. You can do what you want with your money.
They are allowed to ask you for money, but you are equally allowed to say no. I don't know, man. Are you the asshole technically? No. But at the end of the day, you won the lottery and will be fine no matter what. Your brother is dying, and if, when he does die, those kids are still your nephews, right? Maybe talk it out with your brother, Alice, first, then make a decision? Am I the asshole for turning around on a hike I was unfit to complete? I went on a hike with some friends this week, which we planned on doing over five days. After a day and a half, I realized I was not physically fit enough to complete the rest of the hike, and made the decision that I was going to turn around before it was too late. For context, it's 35 miles into a mountain range with 2,000 female of elevation gain per day. I do not do much cardio or hiking, though I am relatively fit. I do have some cardiac issues and am particularly susceptible to altitude sickness, though it was certainly my fault for overestimating my abilities. I shouldn't have went in the first place, but to be honest, the trip was partially my idea. However, I made it very clear to my friends that I myself was going to turn around, and I wanted them to complete it without me. At no point did I ever ask them to turn around, as a matter of fact I explicitly told them not to turn around with me as I didn't want to ruin the trip for them. Yet, they turned around with me, which I did appreciate, but I would rather them have finished it without me, as I made very clear to everyone. Of course we were a bit disappointed that we didn't finish it, but when they claimed it was my fault, I couldn't help but disagree. I argued for 30 minutes trying to get them to continue without me. I chose to turn around because I knew it would be a risk to all of us had I continued on, especially if things got worse, and we were already 10 miles deep so it was best to make the decision before it was too late. We also had no PLB or connection to the outside world, so there was no way to call for help if things got bad. I was willing to accept the risk that came with returning solo, as it is heavy grizzly bear country, but I did have bear defense. Once we finally got back, everyone claimed how it ruined their weekend. I can see why they think that, but I explicitly told them not to follow me back, and to continue the hike without me. They say it was my fault they didn't get to finish it. TBH it made me feel like shit and I don't think I want to go on another trip with them because I don't want to risk ruining it. For a bit more context, these are my best friends whom I've known my whole life. I don't hold any resentment towards them, and I am 100% confident we will remain friends for many years to come, if not for the rest of our lives. We are still hanging out today, but I can't help but feel like they hold some level of resentment for my decision to turn back on the hike. Am I the asshole for ruining everyone's weekend? I thought I made the right choice but I feel as though I may not have. Edit. Thanks for your input everyone. I realized that I grossly overestimated my abilities and I apologize to the whole group. I am very grateful that they were looking out for me, and they are undoubtedly the best friends I could have. Nobody holds any resentment, we were just upset at the time. Next time I will make sure I am prepared, and choose a trail within my skill level. You are the asshole for pretending they could let you travel alone, with your limitations for a day and a half alone through bear country. You needed to accept that this was a weakest link thing so the chain had to call it. No shame in that, you did the right thing, but to insist that they could have just let you go alone is, like you're saying you could do this, is overestimating your abilities. If it was a one half day back or something, where you could reasonably be expected to be back for sundown, maybe. But day and a half? So you would have to camp alone one night with bears? They couldn't let you do that after you just said you were struggling physically. I think your plan to hike back solo as an unfit, sick and unprepared hiker was dangerous. At least one person had to go back with you, so what other choice was there than everyone going? I don't think you were necessarily the asshole, you continuing probably would have sucked for everyone, but at least acknowledge your actions and decisions really did affect everyone else on this hike. Do have some cardiac issues and am particularly susceptible to altitude sickness. You are the asshole. You are the asshole. I do have some cardiac issues and am particularly susceptible to altitude sickness. You are the asshole because you knew you have these conditions and didn't get checked by a doctor to see if this trip was physically possible for you to do. Also did you really think your friends would let you, a solo unfit and unprepared hiker, travel back alone? There's a high probability you would have been injured or died if they had. You need to apologize if you don't want these people to become former friends. Everyone sucks here for taking on a hike of this level with no PLB or communication equipment. Get a damn Garmin. 
What was your plan if y'all got into trouble which is a very really possibility on a hike like this? If you had gotten lost or needed rescue you are putting other people's lives at risk. You are the asshole. First, for doing no preparation for the trip. Second, for refusing to recognizing the reality of the situation. There is zero chance they could have let you hike back on your own. If something had happened, they would have never been able to deal with the guilt. You need to apologize for ruining their hike. Am I the asshole, 26M, for not allowing my girlfriend, 24F, to not drink alcohol? My girlfriend was recently told by a doctor that she needs to stop drinking as she is at a very high risk of a heart attack. Heart problems run in her immediate family. She used to drink daily, up to six beers a day plus sometimes spirits, and had a high cholesterol at this time. She stopped for four months after being told to by the doctor, and things went well. Her family recently visited and we ended up drinking for a few nights, with her saying that she'll stop when they go home. They have now left, and she spent the last two days drinking the rest of the beer but yesterday ended up buying more from the shop. Am I the asshole for refusing to drive her to the shop to buy more today? I told her that she can walk home if she buys alcohol and now she's in the bedroom on her own with the door shut. Should I be letting her handle this on her own? She said, I'll stop again on Monday, but I don't have much faith since I've heard this before. Poorly phrased title, you're refusing to drive her, which isn't the same as not allowing, but not the asshole. You're not required to drive someone to the store to buy something that's potentially deadly for them. However, if you want to support her and not drinking, you need to stop drinking around her and stop keeping alcohol in your house, even when her family visits. You can't make her stop but you can make it more difficult for her to start. Not the asshole, but this is above Reddit's pay grade. A person who is drinking that much daily has a real issue, and someone who can't just stop has more issues than just their heart. Definitely I think it is good not to enable her, and you should really encourage her to get additional help. It sounds like she can't just have the occasional beer out. Nah. Your girlfriend is an alcoholic and she struggles to stop drinking. It's going to be a hell of a ride but she needs help, and she needs to stop drinking, even socially. Help her get help and make sure she is not put in situation where she will be pressured to drink. Best of luck to you. Your girlfriend is an alcoholic, and you're not dealing with it well. Telling an alcoholic they're not allowed to drink isn't going to work. Find a group like Al-Anon, which is a support group for people whose family members are alcoholics. You don't have the skills to treat her alcoholism. Info. Do you drink around her, even when she's not, allowed? Not the asshole. You're not saying she can't drink, you're just refusing to facilitate something that is potentially life-threatening for her. That's a very normal and healthy boundary, she can do what she wants but you're not going to be part of it. If she wants alcohol that badly she can get to the shop and back on her own. It sounds like this is a real problem for her. She might need some professional help. Am I the asshole for telling my friend that she isn't traumatized from somebody else's proposal? I, 20 female, have had three close friends in college, Grace, 21 female, Matt, 21 male, and Laura, 21 female. Laura really likes using mental health terminology. She explores a lot of labels from those therapist influencers online. She was told that she has an anxiety disorder and depression but that's the only diagnosis she's been given so far. Recently she's been exploring autism and ADHD. Matt wanted to propose to Grace. They've been dating for a while. He's been planning the proposal for a couple of weeks and while the proposal was very intimate between the two of them I was very involved in scheduling the after-proposal event at a restaurant. The specifics of that are irrelevant to the story but it was lovely and Grace and Matt seemed really happy. Laura told us that she didn't want to be involved in planning the proposal because it reminded her of her parents' divorce. She said that she might come to the post-engagement party. Welcome the day of the engagement and both Matt and I forget to check in on Laura. I don't think it's Matt's fault at all because he was occupied with far more important things but I feel a bit guilty about not reminding her. She ended up not coming to the party. The next day she starts posting online some dramatic, for lack of a better word, things about how it was traumatizing to see how little her friends cared about her, and that she'll be updating her followers on her trauma therapy journey. She posts that she's now in a really dark place and she thinks she has PTSD. 
For context, I'm pretty sensitive to mentions of trauma and PTSD because I was diagnosed with PTSD by a psychologist in my last year of high school after something that happened in my first. I felt a lot of guilt and shame around this because I spent a lot of time feeling that the thing that happened wasn't bad enough to count. I sometimes still get nightmares and flashbacks but it's gotten better after therapy. I know that I have my own issues wrapped up regarding the word and it bothers me a lot when people seem to throw the terms around without understanding their weight but I also acknowledge that I can't stop the internet from doing its thing. I haven't told any of my college friends about this, so Laura doesn't know. At one point she called me and starting explaining how traumatized she is and I finally snapped and said, you're not traumatized, stop being dramatic, you just got exactly what you asked for. Now I feel guilty because I feel like I was a little harsh, and she's posting online, without my name at least, that one friend that she thought she could rely on to support her is abusive and doesn't understand how being traumatized works. However, I feel like honestly, Laura's being very dramatic about an event that's not about her. I called my mom to see what her opinion is and she told me that I could have reminded Laura about the party and while my point is not necessarily wrong, I could have been more sensitive, so now I'm not sure how wrong I am. Not the asshole. I cannot stand people who throw around psychological terminology with actual meanings to describe just their normal feelings. This person is absolutely creating their own drama and you want no part of it. Why would anyone need to check in on her the day of someone else's proposal? She said she might come to the after party, it's on her to decide if she'll come. Ah. This is a friend who is going to require far too much attention when it comes to the little things, making everyone miserable. Do not apologize, keep your distance and re-examine what kind of friendship you want. Laura sounds exhausting. It's not about her but the narcissist just couldn't not be the center of attention for five minutes. Not the asshole. So Laura was told about the party ahead of time said she might show up and went on not caring enough to ever follow up with anyone involved with it and just forgot? Lol not the asshole she clearly didn't care enough to go. She told you she didn't want to be involved but then was traumatized because she wasn't involved? It's gonna get a lot worse with this nut before it gets better. Time for some distance. Not the asshole your friend follows, therapist influencers, and then diagnoses herself. This is absolute nonsense and does not warrant a minute of your time or thoughts. She can post whatever she likes online, you would be better off ignoring her since, after a little while, everyone will forget what she posted anyway. There are so many individuals out there who are truly struggling every day with their mental health and are desperately trying to manage yet another day in a face of incredible difficulties.